Dwight Gooden has been the major factor in the New York Mets success story. This Gooden is amazing. Dwight Gooden will eat you alive up here. And Dwight Gooden has really set this town on its ear. Daryl Strawberry has brought back some Met magic here at Shea Stadium. He might be the best hitter in the National League right now, maybe in baseball. Love you, Doc. Love you too, brother. You're right, brother. All right. Congrats. Now, two guys forever linked, and a little bit later this year, both Dwight Gooden and Daryl Strawberry will have their numbers retired by the New York Mets. Doc will be first April 14th, and then Daryl will follow that up on June 1st of 2024. And Daryl Strawberry, good enough to join us now here on MLB Tonight. Daryl, if someone had told you when you first put on a Mets uniform that someday that jersey would be retired, what would you have thought? Uh, it's kind of hard to say. You just never know uh, when you're a young kid and you want to play Major League Baseball and you want to be successful at it. And you just never know where the dream will take you. Um, I've always believed in my ability to play. That was never a problem for me. I, I think the other parts of life was the confidence that I needed to build. Because just being a baseball player, putting the uniform on, uh, does not make you a man. And I just realized that over mm. the many years of getting into the major leagues and playing and being successful and, and, and playing with some great guys. So, you know, it's such an honor. I'm very thankful for um, Steve and Alex, uh, the own, new ownership of, of the Mets. And uh, they're taking steps uh, in a different direction and bringing the history of the Mets because there's a lot of history with a lot of great players. And, you know, coming up in 1983, I had no idea that I would have such great success over in Queens for eight years. Well, congratulations, Straw. It's, it's a great honor, not only for yourself, your family, but all of us uh, that were lucky enough to play with you. We saw all of those uh, great moments. I, I was just <laughs> thinking that when you first came up in May, we were down in AAA and you got called up. It wasn't just getting called up to play. The Mets had been traditionally so bad for so many years, and you – we're going to be the savior of this organization. What kind of pressure did you feel as a young player coming up that May of 83? I, I, it was big, you know. I, I think after going through spring training in 83 and playing um, in some of the A games and playing well and, and thinking that I might break with the team, but the general manager, Frank, didn't want to do that. Uh, he sent me back down to AAA. I think he was very cautious about the fact because of what happened to Tim Leary, who was a young star. And he pitched opening day in Chicago and he hurt his arm. It was never the same. So the expectations were were big for me. Um, I think as I started to go forward, I started to learn more about myself. And it's not really all about just about me uh, or how successful I was. It's about everybody that helped me get there, Ronnie. Mm. You're talking about Jim Fry, you know, who was there in my rookie year that mm. helped me where I should have been at the ballpark early and I didn't show up until like three o'clock and he got in my face and said, I'm never going to wait for you again. If you want to mm. be a great major league baseball player, you'll be at this ballpark early every day. And from that day forward, I was there. And then I go on to win rookie of the year. And then you think about all the other people. impact on me to become the player that I became. And not only that, it's the players I played with. You know, you got to think about that. Those guys deserve a lot of credit because you just can't do it by yourself. Yeah, you are you are an individual player when you get to that place when it's a one-on-one -on -one competition against the pitcher and you and you the hitter. But at the same time, it's all the guys I played with. We had a good team. We had a good enough team for guys to excel and be great at what they were doing. Hey, Straw. Congrats, man. Hey, for me, I have I have four years in New York. And I thought when I got to New York, I was like, uh-oh. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to handle this because I haven't <laughs> played for seven different teams. And when I got to New York, I was like, whoa. Just, just talk about New York. It's different baseball. It's different than anywhere else. People always try to say that it's the same. It's the same as anywhere else, the same baseball. I totally disagree. Mm. I want your thoughts on that. I totally disagree with that, too, Cliff. It's good to see you, man. You're looking good, too, by the Appreciate way. Appreciate you. Um, out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you about that. New York is a different animal. It's a different challenge. Um, the expectations are, are bigger than anywhere else. Um, the fans are on top of you. And I think what happens to players, if they don't understand it, 
And, and what I mean by that, you cannot let the noise in. If you let the noise inside of you, it's gonna, it's gonna crush you mm -hmm. because because it's loud, you know. And it's different for so many players today, you know, with social media and outlets and all the different things they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. You got to stay off of that. You got to stay focused on baseball because you play in New York, and the fans, you know, they will ride you if you're not playing well, and you you you're more concerned about everything else. Because I mean, it's part of it. It's part of it when you play there and you suck and they boo you. I love that fact because I had like a little thing going on with them. When they booed me, I just come out and hit two off the scoreboard and they call me for a curtain call. And I wouldn't, and I wouldn't come out, you know? <laughs> so it, you have to learn how to play the game um, with them. And they do appreciate that when they know you got tough skin. You have to have tough skin. And you just got to remember, yeah, you're going to go through some slumps. You're going to go through some struggles. But at the same time, you're still that player. They wouldn't boo you if you wasn't that player. Yep. If you couldn't perform and get the job done, mm -hmm. they wouldn't boo you. They wouldn't worry about it. They only boo you when you're that top player and you need the, the, you need to fulfill your job out there doing to help our team make progress of going forward and trying to win. Because that's all it's about at the end of the day in New York. It's about winning. You're going to get paid well. You're going to get treated well. But can you win for us? And that's what I mm -hmm. love about playing in New York. You know, Daryl, you're talking about some of the great players you played with, and none better, of course, than Dwight Gooden, the doctor. And he's going to be have his number retired as well on April 14th, yours on June 1st. What does it feel for you um, to share that honor with Dwight in the same calendar year? Well, I can say this, you know, what people are saying, you know, they're always trying to compare us and say we're alike and, and we're not. We're two different people. Of course, we have some of the same trials and struggles uh, that was together probably because of coming up to New York and playing at a young age. Uh, I never seen anything like him early when we saw him in spring training um, that year in 1984, and he was going to have a chance to probably make the team. Uh, I know Frank was thinking about it. Did I bring him? Because he's young. He's 19. So then we go on to that 85 season. And when he had that 85 season where he won Cy Young, I tell people all the time, I've never seen anything like it. I've never mm. seen a guy <laughs> that had such great command and poise that could throw his fastball anywhere and could throw a breaking ball at any given time. And I used to think about major league hitters, used to think about. You know, hurt your neck or shoulder something, take a BP because they didn't want them three punch outs because they. <laughs> 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 it was a tough, it would have been a long night. It's a long night when you got to young kid out there controlling the game like that and not only him controlling the game but the way Carter was Carter was his big help Carter gave him the boost that he needed to become that pitcher he needed to be just like the whole pitching staff I think Carter did that for everybody well Daryl congratulations uh, on this honor well deserved and we can't wait to see that number retired by the New York Mets a little bit later, June 1st of, uh, of this year. Congratulations again. Thanks for joining us here on MLB tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate you guys.